Then this problem, we need to use the law of sines to show that in the triangle ABC, the following equation is true. Then let us begin. So what we'll do? Let me state we'll have to since we have to use the law of sign, we're going to first consider an acute angle triangle. Now we can use any other triangle, an obtuse angle triangle or even a right angle triangle, but for simplicity we're using an acute angle triangle with vertices A, B, and C. First, we'll specify its side, the side opposite to angle A, so that's BC, but we're going to represent it by the letter A in lower case. Then we have the side opposite to angle B, so that's AZ, when we will represent it by the letter B in lower case, and, and the side opposite to angle C, so that's denoted by AB, we're going to represent it by the letter C in lower case. Now let's specify the law of sides. So the law of sine states that if we take the ratio of the side A to that of sine of the angle opposite to it, so that will be angle A, which will be equals to, this ratio will be equals to the ratio of side B to that of sine of the angle opposite to side B, so that's angle B. And this is also equals to the ratio of side C to that of the sine of the angle opposite to uh, side C, so that's angle C. So this is the law of sine. So in our case, what we are going to do, we are going to take this law of sine and consider these three ratio and equate it to a constant lambda. And this is going to help us define the value of A. So A will become equals to lambda times sine A. B will be equals to lambda times sine B. And C will be equals to lambda times sine C. So we can start either from the left hand side or we can start from the right hand side so we'll start from the left hand side so here we have one plus cosine of a minus b multiplied to cosine c divided by one plus cosine of a minus c multiplied to cosine b now what we'll do we'll try to rewrite cosine of c and cosine of b because we know for a fact that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle that is a plus b plus c that amounts to pi radians which means we can have a plus b equals to pi minus c now if we take the cosine on both sides so we'll get cosine of a plus b so that will be equals to cosine of pi minus c now cosine of pi minus c that's negative cosine c which means that cosine of a plus b, so that's equals to negative cosine c. Similarly, we can consider a plus c to be equals to pi minus b. And then when we take the cosine on both sides, cosine of a plus c will then be equals to negative cosine b. So what we'll do, in place of cosine c in the numerator, we're going to replace with negative cosine of a plus b and cosine of b will get replaced with negative of cosine a plus c. So let's do that. So our left hand side will then now become 1 minus cosine of a minus b multiplied to cosine of a plus b divided by 1 minus cosine of a minus c multiplied to cosine of a plus c so this is the left hand side now we'll work with this particular section now we'll use a trigonometric uh, manipulation here to find to simplify cosine of a minus b multiplied to cosine of a plus b so let's do that now let's uh, do it here cosine of a minus b multiplied to cosine of a plus b now what we'll do, we'll multiply by 2 and divide by 2. So that we can use the fact that 2 times cosine of a minus b times cosine of a plus b. So that becomes equals to cosine of 2a plus cosine of 2b. And from the half angle formula, we know that cosine of 2 theta so that can be expressed as 1 minus 2 times sine squared theta. So in that case, we have the sine of 2a. So this will become half multiplied to 1 minus sine squared a. And cosine of 2b will become 1 minus 
sine squared b. This is factor 2 that I've missed out. Now, 1 plus 1, so we can have 2 minus 2 times sine squared a minus 2 times sine squared b. So we can factor out 2 and divide it by the 2. So that's what's going to give us 1 minus sine squared a minus sine squared b. Now what is 1 minus sine squared a? That's simply cosine squared a. So we have cosine squared a minus sine squared b. Meaning cosine of, so let me write it here, cosine of a minus b multiplied to cosine of a plus b. So this reduces to cosine squared a minus sine squared b. So similarly, the denominator portion when we have cosine of a minus c multiplied to cosine of a plus c. So this will become equivalent to cosine squared a minus sine squared c. So we can replace it here. Then our left hand side is going to become we have 1 minus cosine squared a. Uh, we have negative multiplied to it. So this will become positive sine squared b. Divided by 1 minus cosine squared a plus sine squared b. C. That's not b. It's sine squared c. Now what is 1 minus cosine squared a? So 1 minus cosine squared a. So that's sine squared a plus sine squared b whole divided by sine squared a plus sine squared c now we already defined the value of sine squared a uh, sine a so sine a is a over lambda from here we can find out what a over lambda so let's do it here so we have sine squared a plus sine squared b divided by sine squared a plus sine squared c so the law of sine states that we have a equals to lambda times sine of a so which would mean that sine of a will be equals to a over lambda similarly we can define sine b so sine b will be b over lambda and sine c will be equals to c over lambda so sine squared a we can replace with with a squared over lambda squared and sine squared b will be b squared over lambda squared whole divided by sine squared a so that's a squared over lambda squared plus c squared over lambda squared so this is the left hand side that we're working with and finally we're going to get a squared plus b squared divided by a squared plus c squared and this is the expression on the right hand side so hence we have successfully showed that 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 the given expression 1 plus cosine of a minus b times cosine of c divided by 1 plus cosine of a minus c times cosine of b equals to a squared plus b squared over a squared plus c squared using the law of sines.